All Aboard by Daphne Skinner, illustrated by Jerry Smith. All Aboard to Jill Rosenberg Smith. All Aboard, the connector shouted. Jay and Kit raced down the platform and climbed on just before the train chugged off. That was close, said their grandma. I was afraid I'd have to go to Florida all alone. Jay looked at Kit. Can you ever be on time? Kit laughed. Time schmime, she said. Graham loved trains, so they were all taking the stop-and-go railway to Cousin Joe's wedding. Jay got to the brunette first. Cool, he said. Look how the beds fold out of the wall, said Kit. It's like magic. Jay checked his new waterproof calendar watch. We're on schedule, he said. We'll be at the Happy Cow in about 16 hours. Graham, Kit, and Jay had each chosen a place to visit on their trip. The Happy Cow was Jay's. The train stops, only stops for 45 minutes, he said. So our timing has to be perfect, Kit. Kit wasn't listening. Jay sighed and picked up the menu. Hey, the dining car is open. You two go ahead, said Kit. I'll catch up. Uh-huh. Jay knew she'd be late. Kit was late a lot. She was late for soccer games. She was late for trick-or-treating. One time she was even late for her own birthday party. And she was late getting to dinner. When she finally strolled in, Jay was already on dessert. Graham gave Kit a menu. Remember, kids, she said, the train won't stop long in Herdville tomorrow. If we dawdle, we'll never get to the happy cow. No problem, Jay said. Whatever, said Kit. The next morning, Jay woke Kit up extra early. He knew she wouldn't notice. She never looked at clocks. When the train stopped in Herdville, he rushed Graham and Kit to the bus stop. The bus pulled up at 11.50 and they got to the Happy Cow at 12 o'clock. Perfect timing. Jay ordered a fast track fudge milkshake at 12.05. Grandma ordered her blueberry ginkgo memory waker at 12.07, but Kit just couldn't make up her mind. Kiwi grape, she wondered out loud. Banana mango peppermint pear. Kit took so long that they almost missed the bus back to the station. Then the bus got caught in traffic and they had to run for their train. That was way too close, panted Jay. It was my one chance to have a happy cow shake, Kit said. I had to pick just the right flavor. She took a big slurp. Double berry slow melt brain freezer. Yum. That afternoon was Kit's big stop. Her favorite magicians, Hector and Bob, were performing in Tempest, North Carolina. The train was stopping there to pick up new passengers, so Graham, Kit, and Jay had just enough time to see the four o'clock magic show. When they got off the train, Graham looked up and down the street. The taxi was supposed to be here at 3.30. Well, where is it? asked Kit nervously. It's late, said Jay. What if we miss the show? Kit cried. The taxi finally showed up. Sorry I'm late, said the driver. I'm behind schedule today. Kit scrambled inside. Jay had never seen her move so fast. Every time they stopped for a light, Kit bounced up and down and whispered, Hurry up! Hurry up! They got to their seats just as Hector and Bob were doing their first trick. Hector sawed Bob in half. Bob pulled a scarf out of Hector's nose. Hector changed Bob into a gorilla. Bob changed Hector into a whirling cloud that smelled like grape juice. There's pictures of all their tricks. Then Hector asked for volunteers. Kit's arm shot up and he chose her. Up on the stage, Kit held a top hat as Hector pulled out a rabbit, a clock, and a pink feather boa. It was like a wonderful dream. Hector and Bob gave Kit the boa, the clock, and their new book, Timing is Everything. She practically fainted. Timing is Everything, 10 Great Magic Tricks You Can Learn in a Day by Hector and Bob. That was cool, Jay said on the way back. Kit was still in a happy daze. I wouldn't have missed it for anything, she said. Then she remembered she almost had missed it. Maybe timing is everything, Kit thought. That night, Kit was right on time for dinner. Jay checked his watch. You're ready? Kit just smiled. Better be on time tomorrow, you two, Graham said. Don't forget, we're switching trains. Right, said Jay. We get to Corndale at 1030 and find lockers for our bags, and then we visit your special stop. The next day, Kit was right on time again. They pulled into Corndale at exactly 1030 and caught the state fair trolley at 11 o'clock. The fair was huge. There were rides and games and five cotton candy boots. But Graham's mind was on just one thing. Let's head right over to the giant vegetables, she said. I hear they're amazing. Oh, look at all the things at the fair. But the giant vegetable tent was closed. We'll just get some cotton candy and come back later, said Graham. 
We can't, Jay told her. Our trolley leaves at 1.30. Oh, no. I wanted to see the giant jalapeno. Graham looked very disappointed. Wait, Jay, said Kit. She took the schedule and flipped it over. You're reading the Monday to Friday side. Today's Saturday. We can get a trolley at 2.30 and still be back in time to catch our train. Jay stared at her. Then he checked the schedule for himself. I can't believe it, he murmured. You're right, Kit. Graham whooped. Jalapeno, here we come. There was lots to do while they waited. At 12 o'clock, they heard a champion hog collar. At 12.45, Graham decided to enter a pie-eating contest. She came in second. At 1.30, it was time to see the giant vegetables. They were amazing. First prize went to a radish as big as a beach ball. Graham, Kit, and Jay had their picture taken with it. At 2.30, they took the trolley back to the station, and at 3.30, they got on their new train. The train stopped in sunny city, Florida at 4.45. It was cloudy. Jay and Kit met their parents at the Sunny Suites Inn just as it started to rain. Before the kids went to bed that night, Graham said, The wedding's at 10 o'clock tomorrow. When should we be ready to leave, Jay? We'll be fine if we're out the door at 9.30 on the dot. He glanced at Kit. Not a problem, she said. The next morning, Jay woke up to a loud thumping noise. Drum? No. Stampede? No. He looked around. The sun was so bright outside. What time was it? Jay, Kit called. She thumped on his door again. Jay, wake up. Jay bolted out of bed. Why didn't my alarm clock go off? Relax, Kit said. It's still early. The rain last night made the power go out. No alarms rang. Jay blinked. So how come you're awake? Magic, she said, grinning. The clock Hector and Bob gave me works on batteries. Now let's wake everyone up. We don't want to be late for the wedding, do we? And thanks to Kit, they weren't. Schedules. Can you read down? Can you read across? Great, then you can read a train schedule. Suppose you want to take the Beach Express from Shelltown to Dolphin Bay. You'll want to depart on Friday and arrive on Saturday. So there's the Beach Express Railway Schedule, Train 15, Castleside to Dolphin Bay. So step number one, read down to find Friday and across for Shell. Step two is the green arrow, find depart, then read across to see what time the train leaves. Step three is the blue arrow, read down to find Saturday and across for Dolphin Bay. And then step four is the purple arrow, find arrive, then read across to find the time the train gets to Dolphin Bay. Answer the following questions about your trip. So think about it. On which day will you leave? Oh, I see the arrows pointing to Friday. From which town will you leave? Oh, that arrow for step one is pointing to Shelltown. At what time does the train depart? Ooh, the train departs, I see the green arrow telling me, at 6.15 p.m. Uh, number four, on which day will you will your train ride end? Ooh, step three, it looks like it's going to end on Saturday. And at what time will you get to your destination? I see arrive at 10 a.m. All right. Here are some activities that you could do together. You could pause it here and read these if you wanted to do any of these with your child to work on some math skills. Thank you for listening.